This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, yes, uh, good morning. Welcome to the SAP trainings.com. That is my portal. In fact, you can refer that. Uh, this is what uh, the SAP trainings.com. This is uh, my portal. Even in fact, I myself developed this one through, through SAP UI 5. And here we can even download all the contents UI 5 Fairy. Hana above, etc. Just click on it, you can download it. So this is what I self myself developed through UI5. For further reference, you can use it. So now myself Ganapati Aidimulum. Having 15 years of experience in SAP, I started my career as an ABAPR and then worked on various SAP technical technologies like Webdyn Prabab, Workflow, HR ABAP. Nowadays into HANA ABAP and SAP Fury. I'm also certified in HANA ABAP. But when, when you wanted to certified in a HANA ABAP, ABAP certification is mandatory. So that I'm certified in ABAP as well as HANA ABAP. And I work for various clients as a developer initially five years as a full time developer work for Capgemini, Infosys and Satin Computers. That is nearly from 2003 to 2007, seven and off then out of my interest i'm into trainings nowadays i'm into corporate trainings freelancing etc this is about me briefly so now let us go with the hana abap introduction so yes please see this this is how the erp system got evaluated the evaluation of erp system so started with uh, r2 collection of limited uh, standard modules r3 and more and more functionality functional module like mmsdp phr then erp the the actual success started from here no 4.7 ecc and uh, enterprise edition 4.7 ee enterprise edition and and then one common point for all these products these products works on any database that is reason we, we are working with open SQL without knowing the database. Open SQL works for any database. But now there is a situation. Now this is the latest product. SAP S4 HANA. SAP S4 HANA is an improved ERP. It's a simplified ERP. S4 S stands for simple. As some people call suit. So simple ERP. So what is simplified here is the front end is simplified. Even the applications are simplified. I'll tell you how it is simplified. But one one point which deviates all these products and this product is this works only on HANA because HANA is a special database, unique database. I'll show you what are all the differences between the traditional database and HANA database. So HANA is a unique and special database to enjoy the speciality of this database. To enjoy the speciality of the database, yes, we need a product which can leverage the benefits of HANA. That is the reason SAP came up with one situation where a product called S4 HANA works only for HANA database. It works only for HANA database. Maybe you can ask, I have ERP, it also works for any database. Here I can, here, here also I can use HANA database because this is the system. Here also I can use HANA database. You can use any database here. And here it needs only HANA database. Now you may ask when it works for any database, why we need a separate product only which works for HANA database? Yes, the reason is, the reason is if you are running your ERP on HANA, your ERP remains as it is. There is no improvements at this ERP level. And you are just replacing that database with the database. That means, that means, let's say you are using a 2G mobile, a 2G mobile, and with the 2G SIM card, the SIM card I will call it as a backend, which can store your data and all. A 2G mobile, and using your 2G SIM card. Now, what you are doing, you are replacing this with 4G. The SIM card you are replacing with 4G. Then is there any advantage when the mobile supports only 2G? Yes. Does, does it make sense? 
so it is just the same mobile same performance just by replacing the 2g with 4g you don't get any benefits of 4g until or unless your mobile is replaced your mobile supports it that's what happens with uh, erp on hana when you say erp on hana it is erp designed for any database just by replacing that database with this database and we don't see much difference at the erp level with respect to performance now s4 hana is a system s4 hana is a system not only you change the sim card and you also redesign the mobile a mobile which supports 4g so that this can get the maximum benefit from this 4g network that's what sap s4 hana is rewritten redesigned such a way such a way it can get the maximum benefits from hana database i'll come to that how hana is different from other database but to make it simple because many people ask a common question like what is the difference between ecc on hana i can call it as ecc what is the difference between ecc on hana and s4 hana because ecc on hana can also run on hana database s4 hana runs only on hana database ecc on hana is similar to a 4g sim card in the 2g mobile whereas s4 hana is not only the sim card is 4g even the mobile also supports 4g so hope the difference is simple and clear yes so that is the first thing i wanted to understand to check uh, your common questions like difference between ec sanana and so and so so that is the first thing the next one now this is the latest product guys this is the latest product every new customer of course will go for this one every new customer will go for this one and next most of the existing customers also migrating migrating to s4 hana so we are in a situation that your product works only on hana so that is the reason so when it works only on hana there are certain changes at the programming level there are certain changes at the programming level by keeping the database in mind because hana has certain features unique features so when you write any additional abap program when you write any custom programs we need to keep your hana features in mind sap programs already written sap programs are already written by keeping the hana features in mind and there are no doubt in that but when you develop any custom programs we have to keep your hana database the features of hana like in memory columna database in mind and write the programs so that as long as you are working with this product it's a mandatory for us to know how to write your abap programs by keeping the hana features in mind so that particular set of that particular set of uh, things we collectively call it as hana abap just like hr abap guys hr abap by keeping the hr module in mind because hr module differs from other modules like type delimited type delimited is main thing so everything everything must be in a begin date and date by keeping the hr module nature in mind we write certain changes we do certain changes at programming level where we use logical database and all only that particular collection of uh, changes we call it as and hr above otherwise it's not a separate above there is no mm above there is no sd above there is no hr above i mean there is no pp above why hr above because the nature of the nature of hr module and other modules uh, are different just by keeping that difference in mind if you write the program we call it as collectively hr above similarly by keeping the hana features in mind we need to write your above programs and that part we call it as and hana above and now we are calling as hana above because in the olden days actually since hana is a new database and all now we don't need to call hana above guys it is just above because in every product is as for hana and it is abap only in future we don't call it as hana abap hana abap will, will be called as abap it becomes a common just like in the olden days we call them call the phones as smartphones now phone means smartphone only in the olden days just to differentiate the normal phone and smartphone because smartphone is new so that we used to call the smartphone 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 nowadays phone means smartphone only right 90% of the phones are smartphones like that so when when sap is completely as for hana when many customers we don't need to call it as hana abap it is just abap in future we call it as just abap only it becomes a normal abap whatever you are going to learn it becomes a normal abap 
the hana abab some people nowadays calling as advanced abab hana abab or in future the advanced becomes normal abab so this is what the first point now let us try to understand how hana database is unique from the other databases so how to get benefited from those hana features while writing abab programs to make it simple hana abab is writing your abab programs by keeping the hana features in mind to get the benefits of hana database i repeat hana abab is writing your custom abab programs by keeping your hana features in mind hana features like columna database in memory and all to get the maximum benefits from hana database because if you don't keep the hana features if you are still writing the programs uh, when when it is special you cannot enjoy the speciality of that database that is the main thing and here there are many things in abab like your uh, what are your forms working with the scripts and forms bdcs and screen programming ui programming these are all remains as it is especially when you are retrieving the data from database especially when you are retrieving the data from database that time that time we can see certain differences so hana abab doesn't mean that where you discuss internal table discuss uh, this one and you are what uh, sap script smart forms bdcs and all what we discuss in fact so maybe and it is early to discuss the course content but if you are curious to know the course content i recommend uh, to go to our portal the sap trainings.com just click on this hana abab we can download the content you can download the content here because you want to you want to cross check what and all will be covered you can download here this is known as abab programming for sap hana or s4 hana so there we can see these are the things we are going to cover and hana introduction to know more about hana these are the sap course contents course course because sap has to decide what what comes under here ha 400 is the actual course content abab programming for sap hana so hana modeling is actually optional this is more about uh, bw and ba consultant but we will try to understand this also our actual course content is this one ha 400 above programming for an sap hana for this prerequisite is your hana introduction and hana sql also because we try to manage with open sql when the open sql is not enough we need to use database specific sql here the database specific sql means hana sql we'll discuss that and mainly this one and here in this ha 400 we have a lot of things you can just scroll down and check it and nowadays they came up with one more course here s4d 400 so 400 s4d 400 it is introduction to above programming for sap s4 hana s4 hana also works on hana database no so this s4d 400 also covered as part of ha 400 anyway i'll go through this also 90 percent of this one will be covered as part of ha 400 so this is what actually our course content this is not my own course content guys this is not my own course content it is the sap course content even if at all you want to go for certification this is the document we have to refer it i'll share all the documents i'm i'm ready with all these uh pdfs as well the sap given pdfs so introduction and all hana studio modeling and here we work with uh, uh hana studio or eclipse most of the advanced above and is supported only through Eclipse or HANA Studio because HANA Studio also internally through Eclipse. So since it is early to discuss this course content, maybe if you have anything in mind, whether that is covered or not, please refer this. So that's all. Now let us try to understand how HANA is unique, how HANA is unique from other databases. Before that, and we need to understand more about this S4 HANA, no? So S4 HANA is known as a new suite of software. S yes, stands for both a suite as well as simple. SAP decided to present a new product. That's what a new mobile which supports your 4G. Not only the SIM card is 4G and also the product should be and 4G supported. So SAP decided to present a new product simplified both at the implementation level at the user experience level. This is more important guys. User experience means your front end. If because nowadays everything is happening through mobile, right? When everything is happening through mobile, so SAP applications should be able to run from the mobiles. 
So earlier, yes, we have the mobile support through Webden Pro Java and Webden Pro ABAP. But Webden Pro ABAP, there is a there is a major drawback in the Webden Pro ABAP. There we are using ABAP. ABAP is a backend language, a programming language which is used to interact with the backend and which is known as heavyweight language. Any language which is going to interact with the database to get the data to put the data that kind of language we call it as a heavyweight language but unfortunately and in web prabap you are using abap itself to develop the web pros also for designing the screens also even the web enabled screens web web prabap even to design the mobile based screens also you are using abap itself so to develop the light weighted that are screens in the mobile should be light weighted so to develop the light weighted components you are using the heavy weighted components heavy weight language so that is the main reason why sap came up with a new way of user experience or user interface now from s4 hana onwards the mobile based applications must be developed through ui5 user interface 5 it is html and javascript based JavaScript is a client side language, guys. JavaScript is a client side language. Every browser supports without installing any, any language. So you can start using the JavaScript because not in SAP, except in SAP, in every other technology, in every other technology, mobile based applications are through JavaScript and HTML5 only because they are known as client side languages and which are lightweight language. To develop the lightweight component, make sure that you use the lightweight component so from s4 hana onwards mobile based applications are through sap ui5 which is sap's own set of javascript libraries they came up with javascript libraries one for input field one for output field one for combo box one for uh, everything so this is a major change nowadays and we have two developers we have two de front end developer is different back end developer is different Front-end developer is UEFI developer. They need not to know ABAP at all. Yes, honestly speaking, a UEFI developer need not to know ABAP at all. Yes, UI5. And here, your back-end developer ABAP. Your back-end developer ABAP. It is not related to HANA ABAP, but related to S4 HANA. So that I just wanted to give and some additional information here. Some additional information like so UI for developer need not to be an ABAPer. Of course, nowadays many ABAPers are learning just because it's an SAP product. Since it's an SAP product, yes, what I'm trying to say, a UI for developer, SAP UI for developer need not to know ABAP language at all. Because, because let's say this is your ABAP. This is your ABAP. And your UI for can understand the data from backend only in the format of O data. This is one format. O data is a data in one format, mainly XML format or JSON format. Don't worry much about what is JSON and all. So UEFI needs the data from backend only in a particular format called O data. So in above there is a procedure. In above there is a procedure how to develop the O data. Yes, we'll see how to develop the O data. That's all. So as long as you are the above we should know how to develop the O data service. If that is given to the UI developer. They know how to consume the data that is coming from O data. They can store the data. They can display the data in their screens. That's all. Similarly, another beauty of UIFI is another beauty of UIFI is let's say you are using a .NET application. .NET as a backend. No worries. If the .NET also can give you the data in the O data format, guys. Yes, my UIFI can understand what is O data. Yes. So UIFI is a technology which is backend language independent earlier web done prabap which is an sap specific again above language to develop both front end and back end even though your back end is java so let us say you are using this many applications in your organizations yes for all of your applications you can very well use the same the same front end called ui5 because being a ui5 developer you don't need to know which back end it is we should know how to consume O data. Here, these people should know how to develop O data. What is O data and all? It's too early, but you can understand like giving the data in a 
XML or JSON format. Each technology has their own way. Each technology has their own way in offering your actual data in the form of OData. In SAP, in SAP, there is something called NetWaver Gateway Server. NetWaver Gateway Server using that will connect to this actual ABAP system and develop the OData service. So what I want you to understand now in S4 HANA onwards, mobile based applications are through SAP UI5. That UI5. Now, as a front end developer, you did not to even know ABAP knowledge. You did not ABAP have a single uh, line of ABAP. Still, you can work as a UI developer. This is what clearly they separate the front end developer and back end developer. But nowadays, many in many organizations, because there are a lot of ABAPers available in the market, to be honest, since there are a lot of ABAPers available in the market, so they are training these ABAPers itself for the UFA also. Because definitely a person who knows both front end and back end, there is certain convenience. That convenience is already also there. As long as you can interact, you know the complete grip of both front end and back end. So that is the reason actually nowadays many ABAPers are going for UA5. Ideally, with no ABAP knowledge, you can go for UA5. So, so this developing this uh, OData service is actually part of your UA5 training, not in the HANA ABAP training. Yes. Now that's what S4 HANA. Yes, it's not for it's not for HANA ABAP uh, discussion, but yes, it's a discussion about S4 HANA. So that's what they're saying. It is implementation simple, the user experience simple. But what they did is the front end language is completely different, right? User experience. But S4 HANA retained the programming. Programming language, they keep it as ABAP only with certain changes, with certain adoptions. So that certain part only we call it as HANA ABAP. Yes, the language, back end language. We call it as back end language now instead of calling. So earlier ABAP is for everything. Now no, ABAP become a specialized language only for back end operations, not for front end operation. Of course, if it is a desktop application, again your screen pointer and all comes into picture. That's okay because as long as a desktop application, since you are not accessing uh, that through mobile, even though it is a heavyweight language, it's okay. But when you are trying to uh, consume your application through mobile. Where mobile is known as a lightweight device, make sure that your application, your front end, your user interface is designed through lightweight language. That lightweight language is now it is SAP UI 5. So that's all, guys. That is a general discussion about that's what they're saying here. S4 HANA is a simplified. Your role based, the main difference between the normal screen and UI 5 screen is a role based because the major limitation with SAP. The moment you log on to SAP, I can see everything, right? The moment you log on to SAP, I can see everything in the SAP. So there is no real business. When I'm a purchasing manager, I should be able to see only purchasing related transactions. That is what role based. This and all actually we discuss more about UI5. So that's what here in this. Yeah, this is about the technology in memory platform. HANA is in memory platform. This we'll see more. So this is about user experience reimagined user experience redesigned user experience yeah now this is the journey sap hana earlier the hana database is used for ecc ecc can be you can use initially this was the actual uh, sap hana purpose later sap was supported for bw we have something called bw powered by hana and so and so now now it is SAP S4 on a complete set of ERP which supports for all, which supports all the modules. Earlier, the, earlier this this is the latest product. Initially, it is just a HANA as a database for your existing system. Then, then BW product is redesigned because that's what I'm keep on telling. What I'm keep on telling, if you don't redesign your mobile, even though your SIM card network is 5G, if the mobile is not redesigned, there is no use. So what they did initially. BW is redesigned such a way to get the maximum benefits from HANA. And then a business suit, a limited models powered by. Now completely S4 HANA is a complete ERP with all the models. This is what the current state because S4 SAP also keep on developing and improving, working on doing a lot of R&D. So this is what the study. Now that's all. Now let us try to understand more about HANA and its feature. Its features and what are all the unique features to keep HANA as a different database from others. This year, HANA stands for 
people read like this ana stands for high performance analytical appliance but i want you to read this in another way i want to read in another way it's an appliance hana is an appliance appliance means both software and hardware combination because because when you say my phone is or yeah my phone is getting slow my laptop is getting slow my laptop is getting slow then when when you tell them my laptop is getting slow then first question from others is tell me what is the ram you are using what is the hard disk you are using what is the processor you are using these are all the first questions from the other party when you are saying that my laptop is getting slow my uh, what my mobile is getting slow the first question comes regarding hardware what is the processor you are using what is the inbuilt memory etc etc because we all know that hardware plays a major role in the olden days since hardware was expensive hardware was expensive because windows operating system is cheaper that is a software rather uh, compared to a ram compared to a processor so hardware is was expensive in the olden days so that most of the people didn't think about hardware now hardware is uh, i cannot say cheaper but compared to olden days it is more affordable so they focus on the hardware also so sap hana is the combination of hardware and software that means they only propose which hardware to be used earlier sap just relax you can use whatever the hardware it is but they know that hardware plays a major role so that they propose which type of hardware even the vendors also even the vendors what vendor and hp and fujitsu and like that ibm this kind of vendors they propose so hana is a combination of software and hardware for what for analytical applications analytical applications means for reporting kind of bi business intelligence reporting kind of applications which deals with the decision making which deals with analyzing analyzing historical data which is so complex last five years sales i wanted to analyze it which was which is so complex so it is a combination of hardware and software for analyzing your application with high performance this is how i want to read it hana is a product is a combination of software and hardware and and for analytical applications mainly with high performance question mark is how hana is going to guarantee the high performance how hana is going to guarantee the high performance that's all we need to understand yes is it clear how to read it it's an appliance for analytical applications with high performance yeah now that's what hana is an appliance now high performance some of the things yeah this is a backbone of hana database which keeps hana as a unique database one is in memory database second one is columnar that is try to understand maybe today in memory as a result of that what kind of changes to be done at the programming level two things i'm going to discuss one is the technology level and one is programming level programming level what need to be achieved what need to be changed to enjoy the concept of in memory that's what i'm saying so abab ana means abab hana means uh, writing your custom programs by keeping your hana features in mind to leverage the benefits of hana similarly in memory let us try to understand it's a common thing you people might be aware of it already but let me discuss it in in detail so hope you guys are following uh, because no one has any questions uh, yes yeah fine thanks right now yeah let us try to understand this one here this is the actual flow of retrieving the data and doing some manipulations and displaying to the end user let's say in the underlying or uh, in the traditional database in the traditional above program what happens here is and we we end user so the end user simply execute a program a report program which is going to display the list so what happens internally data is there in the database tables which need to be retrieved technically speaking your database means your hard disk where your data resides permanently that's what people say database is and the data in the database is permanent why the data in the database is permanent so why the data in the database because it resides at the hard disk level it's a permanent device 
so this is what happens now this is a database table now you tell me being an above power what we usually do we select the data from database table to internal table right we select the data from database table to internal table now getting the data from database table to internal table means get technically speaking getting the data from hard disk to your memory that's what you say ram then once you get the data from hard disk to your ram or internal table here we do all kind of calculations on the internal table level we do all kind of calculations then once the calculations are done this result will be displayed with the help of some and uh, cache memory which is the fastest one cache memory and result will be published so this is the place i want you to understand and focus more so usually what we do get the copy of the data from database table to internal table means get the copy of the data from hard disk to the ram then do your calculations at the internal table level means memory level then publish the results now my question is tell me which device is faster in nature hard disk is faster or ram is faster in nature in general which device is faster in nature is it hard disk or ram ram is faster ram is faster good ram is faster yes when ram is faster when ram also can store your data because you are collecting the data into internal table memory when ram can also store the data my question is why to keep your data in the slower device get a copy into faster device and doing the calculations here why can't you keep your data directly in the ram in that case your data is in the memory your database is in the memory that's what we call it as imdb in memory database in memory database means your database is in memory because your when your ram can store the data here when your ram can store the data when the ram is faster than hard disk then tell me what is the need of keeping the data here in the slow device and getting a copy here and do it why can't you and keep your database in the ram itself directly that's what called in memory database tell me what are all the practical difficulties by maintaining your database in the ram itself which is known as in memory database tell me what is the practical difficulties uh hi this is prateek uh, basically yep. uh, ram basically ram is a volatile memory once the hardware will be shut down the the data will be lost okay good that is one thing yes that is definitely a serious concern because this is a, a volatile so definitely yes this is volatile and definitely we cannot think of it then yeah good that's one and people say that ram was expensive yeah that is a world in olden days that is a valid point now that is not so valid ram was expensive is not so valid nowadays now yeah first point is yes it's a volatile except that volatility everything is fine now yes now the solution for this is when you say in memory database doesn't mean that yes in memory database doesn't mean that we are not going to have the hard disk yes guys the data in the hard disk resides permanently we have to have the data here but some amount of data some amount of data copy of some amount of data will be preloaded usually in the organization the data will be classified data will be classified like hot data cold data something like this who will classify the management and the admins hot data means the data which is frequently accessed for which for which more and more calculations make sense like copa data profitability analysis when you want to analyze the profitability i need the mm data material management data where we purchase and production data where we manufacture sales data by summing by summing all the data then only i can come to a point where i can see the profitability of a particular material so so a lot of calculations have to be done so if the calculations are done at the memory level it's faster than hard disk level so and in the initial stage of your project the management and the functional consultants and will come to one conclusion and they'll decide that which data is a hot data so once they come to know which data is hot data what they do 
copy of this hot data will be preloaded into this ram preloaded guys that means the moment they start the server that time only a copy will be preloaded then definitely there is no worries regarding the volatility because it's only copy now you can start your calculations here itself i don't need to get this data from here to here this is a place we we'll spend a lot of time because this is a slower device it is a it is sequential access see this spindle it has to keep on rotate like this to get a particular line or particular record like that whereas this is ram random access direct access so this is a place where you spend a lot of time to get a copy of the data into the memory once you got the copy of the data into memory definitely your calculations can be done faster this is at the memory level so what i want you to understand is in memory database doesn't mean that we are not going to have the hard disk anymore yes we are going to have the hard disk forever some amount of data which is important critical for which more and more calculations make sense that data will be preloaded into your memory then maybe then maybe you can ask what if i did some change here when you do some change here definitely definitely all kind of manipulations happens with the definitely these changes have to be reflected into the hard disk for that sap architecture hana architecture has something called persistent layer hana architecture has something called persistent layer what this persistent layer does every time you do some change here they'll maintain some save points save point let's say s1 is a save point 1 s2 is a save point 2 s3 is a save point 3 let's say i did three changes in the data level that i need to replicate here yes now and as and when they come across a save point they'll replicate the change in the hard disk maybe you can ask maybe you can ask this save point is committed in the database this save point is committed maybe you can ask what if what if during this save point committing there is something wrong with the this ram something wrong with the system as it is volatile right that time what happens when you restart your system system will check the log persistent layer will check the log yes this is already done this is already done they start from here maybe there is certain of course delay but they'll make sure that every change here is replicated here if there is a change at the database layer level i mean now this acts as a database layer for us this itself acts as a your memory itself acts as a database layer for us so the persistent layer i'll discuss more in the ana architecture will make sure that every change and is tracked there is a log file generated every change is tracked and and due to any reason if there is a, something wrong in this system level memory level and before something is updated or replicated next time when you when you are ready from the, from this place it started replicating the data so at any point of time there won't be any loss of data there won't be any lot of loss of data that's what the the hana architecture is designed such a way a persistent layer will make sure that your changes will be replicated and in memory database doesn't mean that we are not going to have the hard disk at all no we will be having the hard disk forever in fact if you feel that entire data is hot entire data is important we can very well keep the entire database also because rams are available nowadays nowadays rams are available with equivalent capacity of the hard disk because of the hardware innovation this technology is much popular and to be honest guys in memory database is not a new concept at all it's there from the day one onwards from the day one onwards everyone knows that ram is faster than hard disk but why it is popular now because of the availability of the hardware because of availability in in both the cases availability in the rate wise availability in the material wise that uh, device wise just because of the availability only we are talking more about this one to be honest it's not at all a new technology from the day one onwards we all know that memory is faster than hard disk why it is now because of the availability and either in in the form of the device and again in the form of the price so that's all uh, is this point clear now we'll see what need to be done at program level how to make 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 use of this in memory concept at program level so as yes, please others uh, is this point clear what is in memory yes i do yeah fine thank you right now 
now and i'll show you one real 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 time example real time example doesn't mean that a real world example for in memory just like your imdb shortcut in memory database your data is in ram so things will be much faster that's all with a simple diagram now i'll show you one real world example in our real world yeah see this this is what your memory keeping something in your memory is nothing but in memory definitely it is small in size definitely this is volatile definitely this is expensive compared to your phone memory or hard disk memory etc so now in your phone will save many contacts but some contacts here maybe your father contact and and then and whatever you are frequently dialing maybe your bank account number here your employee id here and your pan card here so whatever that is hot for you whatever that is frequently required instead of go to your phone book and search it etc 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 sometimes there may not be any power or may not be any charging in that case so many times many times yeah definitely this is what your permanent memory this is what your expensive memory so how you keep certain important things in your memory like some important concepts some important information and 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 this is what you are in memory definitely this is faster definitely this is faster this is expensive this is limited in size this is volatile so that is the reason we don't keep everything here no we don't keep everything here do you say do you remember my mobile number no even though and you you you, you even though we are we are in touch for last 10 years till you may not remember my mobile number you just simply say my mobile number how many times when your phone is erased or contacts are erased you are in trouble you will wait until someone call it and then then save it so definitely this is a, this is what faster memory expensive memory limited size it is you decide what is hot for you for me something is hot for you something is hot so it is you decide day by day these things may be changed similarly for organization to organization they decide which is hot and which is not so hot so is this clear what is in memory this is a real world example how we use our memory okay. that our memory is a in memory the phone memory is normal hard disk like that phone memory is your hard disk definitely when the manager want when the manager want yesterday sales when the manager ask the respect to representative to what was the yesterday sales definitely he can log on to the system and open it and execute one report and give the result that's what always there if this clerk can remember that last yesterday sales at least then he can immediately so for immediate response this is what in memory but still we should be intelligent enough what to store and what not to store in your memory is this clear this all happens with everyone so yeah that should be clear right now now let us see the programming model now by keeping this in memory in mind by keeping this in memory in mind, let us see the programming model so the programming model usually let's go with a simple example yeah this is a simple example and as a report because this one makes sense more about reports where we retrieve the data from database is because in memory makes sense more more at the time of retrieving the data from database whose data is already there in the memory so now this is a requirement let's say a simple table simple table yeah, the custom table or standard table doesn't matter and i have my customer number my invoice number my priority priority of the invoice and invoice date payment date and of course i i forget one column called netwr net price also net price also let me add that column netwr mm, okay maybe this space i'll come to that okay so net price also netwr is also there this is my requirement net price netwr yes netwr in which there is some amount here some amount is maintained here 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 now this is the data in my database table now my requirement is i want to see this data in a report where this priority i want to show l as low so that user can understand m as medium and and h as high 
this is my first calculation i call it as one calculation because the raw data is there lmh we get the data at the internal table this is my first manipulation my second manipulation is i want to get the due days due how many days are due for the payment this is the payment date this is invoice date this minus this no due p date minus i date this is one more calculation this is one more calculation second calculation my third calculation is interest calculation in the output i want interest depends on the due days if the due days is less than or equal to 30 maybe let's say five percentage of interest on the net price on the invoice amount five percentage and if it is between 31 to 45 and eight percentage and beyond 45 it is 10 percentage is it clear three calculations are very simple calculations i need this during my report now what we usually do what we usually do here yes just go through it this code quickly is it not the same thing what we do Yes. Yes, this is a common practice, right? This is a common practice. Yeah, there is nothing wrong, guys, in this. There is nothing wrong because if yours is a traditional database, this database I want to understand as a hard disk. If your database layer, this is a database layer, your hard disk, and then we get the data from hard disk to your application layer. Internal table means your memory or uh, your application layer you get the copy of the data from slower device to faster device and do your calculations at the application layer at the internal table this is what this is data from database to internal table this is the first step then once you get the data in the internal table this is the second step nothing wrong in this this is definitely the best approach provided if the database is a classical database but what if the database is hana your data is in memory what if your database is hana your data is already in memory now let us say this is hana when this is hana hana your data is already in memory your database layer now here your database layer somewhere here somewhere in the database layer means i want to understand here if it is hana this is a database layer db layer the actual database here let me just change the diagram a bit let me change the diagram a bit here yes here this is the database layer and here itself inside the database layer only maybe you can say something like this here database layer here itself ram memory this entire thing together i am calling it as database layer this entire thing together we are calling it as database layer yes here now this is the database layer sorry yeah this is the database layer so what my intention is your data is already in the memory so when your data is already in the memory assume that data is all in memory it's supporting the in-memory database your data is already in the memory and which memory not in the application server layer memory in the database layer memory you can imagine your in memory is like this a database your data is already in the memory so what i don't need to do that i don't need to select the data from here to here your data is already in the memory your data is already in memory what you can do you can do your calculations from here itself that means you can do all your calculations you can read the data from memory now you can select the data from the memory your data is already in the memory we can do your calculations now at the database layer level not at the application layer level earlier your calculations are here now your calculations are one layer below this is what we say code push down you are pushing your code your calculations down to one layer which layer to which layer application layer to database layer because to be honest either here or here 
in both the cases your calculations are happening at the memory level only but i don't need to get this layer to this layer i can very well do the things at the database layer level but we all know that we all know that we should not overload the database we should not perform the calculations at the database layer level yes if your data is in the in the hard disk then definitely it's not a good practice if your data is in memory data is in memory of the database layer then it's okay so whatever we said earlier bad practice earlier we said doing the calculations at the database layer level is a bad practice now it became good practice because your database is in the memory so i want you to understand database layer means like this your data is already there in the memory of the database layer here itself you can do your calculations i don't need to get a copy into internal table then do the calculations i can do my calculations and everything at the database layer level so this is what a new trend a new trend called code push down pushing your code yeah this is all this and all you can push it this and all you can push it and down to this layer that means during my selection only because selection happens from the database database means this one during the selection only i can very well and do this also so finally into my internal table i should get the calculated data i don't need to do anything at the application layer some people ask what is the use of the application layer then definitely everything cannot be done at the database layer level still few things can be done at need to be done at the application layer so this concept is known as code push down pushing your code down to database layer so for example this is the new way of writing the statements now this is new way see this this statement you are selecting the data just go through this statement guys into table internal table is missing here let me add this is a an image so that i was unable to change it and let us say at the end we have something called into table i tab into table i tab yeah so now you are selecting from the database table here you are selecting from the database table from, but where is your data in memory yes your data is in memory so that you are selecting of course you have to select it but your data is in memory now don't worry about the exact syntax this is a hana sql this is a hana sql and here with commas and all the case expression along with the sql statement now tell me where this case is executed application layer or database layer where this calculation is now getting executed is it a database layer mm -hmm. application layer database layer database layer no sorry prateek not application layer yeah because because you you are during the selection that's what i want to understand during the selection you are doing the calculations if you do it at internal table level then we call it as application layer so this calculation at the database layer level but my data is in memory so that it's a good practice if your data is in hard disk then definitely it's load on the database this is one functionality days between is an sql function like we have function modules function modules in above function modules are called at application layer level now sap came up with many sql functions when is sql functions similar to function modules only but these functions can be used at the database layer level that will be during the select statement level during that sql that's what we called as sql functions nowadays they came up with many 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 sql functions which can be used during my sql statement similarly this is one more case statement when the days between is between 1 and 30 5 percent is else it is 30 to 60 8 percent is else it is 10 percent is this end as an interest this is the this is the result for one column called interest this is the result for one column called due days this is the result for one column called priority these are all straight forward values now once your execution is completed my internal table is ready with the resultant set even with the calculated data my internal table is ready even with calculated data guys no calculations once you got the data into internal table so all my things are happening at the database layer level and and then we got the internal table with the calculated data this is the major change at programming level so is this clear Yes, 
yeah but uh, it seems like we are retrieving data from the database and then pushing it back to the database do we, do we, i don't see any internal table here sorry sorry here it is internal table right we are not putting the data into database table again into table internal okay. table is last okay. line okay. we are not putting the data into database table again we are just collecting the it's a from database table it is into internal table got it yeah yeah so because putting the data into database means your insert statement should come into picture your update statement should come into picture there is no insert there is no update nothing and one more thing this code push done mainly makes sense during the selection only during the selection only code okay. push done makes sense because insert is anywhere database layer it should be done and update delete and all it must be done at the yeah. database layer level only yeah. so this calculation my interest is this calculation this is the first calculation this is my second calculation this is my third calculation this calculations we are doing during the selection during the selection it's actually not a good practice when the data is in the hard disk it becomes good practice just because your data is in memory because of your in memory database otherwise definitely it will burden it will burden the database if the database is still in the if you are retrieving from the classical database this approach is good and effective only for in memory like databases so i think that's all i wanted to actually discuss for today and see this here the diagram and earlier just give me five more minutes guys yes earlier we do the calculations here at the application layer level now calculations at the database layer level this is known as code to data or code push and sap terminologies code to data coding directly on the data calculation directly on the data and for convenience i am calling it as code push down yes this is also a generic word but sap terminology is code to data pushing your code down to one layer this is a data to code data to code means get the data then code it here that is data to code this is a code to data it is a traditional rdbms your most of the logic here the lot of round trips this is a database layer application layer hana like databases your data plus logic here only a database layer logic means calculation very less amount of logic at the application layer level so just go through these three points quickly yes is it clear yeah so that's all same points what we discussed in the diagram so that is uh, what i wanted to understand for today maybe even i showed that uh, course content also no maybe you can download it from my portal or if you already have it it's okay Yes. any questions guys and the course duration of 4 to 5 weeks monday to friday daily one hour at the same timings same timings and 6:30 am to 7:30 am it's a monday to friday and with two months hana server access minimum 4 weeks and maximum 5 weeks. it's a very very uh, small uh, module kind of thing just because you people don't know and this is new so that it's in demand otherwise it's uh, quite simple after completion of the entire hana abab course you might feel that what is there in hana abab it's uh, quite simple it's that much simple so that's all guys uh, i'm done for today and your next session is on monday because tomorrow i have one more demo from another institutes because they want me to have a separate demo you people are uh, me directly some people from another institutes also so tomorrow i had another demo tomorrow is friday so and saturday send a break sir. and from monday we will we'll go with the regular sessions sir would we be yes. having enough uh, i'm sorry sorry so someone is asking is about to ask something uh, sorry sir i didn't get you okay would we be having enough uh, practical sessions or would we be doing uh, Uh, a small project kind of a thing by the end Just yeah see whatever 
Yeah, this course is usually for uh, targeting the uh, already working ABAPERS. Yes, see, the course is really targeting the working ABAPERS. So definitely we cannot go with the dummy examples. We cannot go with the dummy examples. We will go with some examples which are closer to the real time only. But to be okay. honest, we cannot have something like a project, a complete project, because when you say project, front end, back end, and programs and all comes into picture, this is just one section of your project, more about retrieving the data and doing the calculations. So whatever that makes sense, whatever that may we can, we can very well go with as closer as possible with the real time examples. Definitely, because this is our people by keeping a working above person in mind. So definitely I have to go with some examples which are very closer to the real time. Okay, I asked you this because uh, I'm looking forward for interviews and I'm going to take up interviews from the month of Jan after this course is over. So yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking right. if I would be able to take up uh, a BAP on HANA interviews after the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even during the course also you can, uh, but uh, it's not a good practice. So after the course, you mm -hmm. can definitely because we are covering uh, the SAP course content. So it's not something like my own course content. You don't need to worry whether it's this is going to be covered, that is going to, because some people have their own course content. In that case, you don't know whether that is real HANABAP or not. So at one thing, at okay. least, yeah, whatever SAP call it as HANABAP, we are learning that only. So definitely. And one more thing, guys, as I said here in the initial first screen, in the first screen, it's a mandatory for us to to go with HANABAP because now we are in a, in a place now we are in a place where SAP has a product which supports only HANA database. So it's mandatory for us to update our skill with this HANA specific above. It's a mandatory. Because this is what the latest uh, situation for SAP product. Yeah. So yes, you need not to worry much. Definitely we'll go with as 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 closer as possible with the real time examples. Because uh, this is not. Yeah, because this is not by keeping the beginners in mind. Uh, this is by keeping the already experienced ABAPers in mind. Uh, so definitely it will go with real time examples only. Here they are asking for lots of uh, ABAP on HANA and they are uh, also additionally specifying about um, uh, CD as view. Uh, um, all those views and all, it is a specification, separate specification along with ABAP HANA. Is that a separate course or should, is, is it included along with this? No, no, no. See, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go through this course content, CDS view, yes, yeah. here. That's what, whatever you're expecting, you know, you please go through this course content. Here are core data services in ABAP. Yeah. Associations, yeah. code data, it is part of this. And one more thing here, there is one separate document here only exclusively here in anaba these are the pdfs i'm going to share with you in the ha400 series views are part of it now i also discuss here cds above separate document s4d 430 that's what whatever that is in your mind no please go through the course content and then confirm that is it going to be covered as part of anaba or not yes this one building code data services as part of your above this separate document for this I'll, I'll going to discuss this also as part okay. of Anabab. In fact, it is part of Anabab. Okay. Yes. okay. The 400 is actual course content. Yeah, in the actual course content here, we can see, of course, the same content I copied and pasted over there. Here, core data services, uh, core data associations, authorizations, input fields, etc., etc. On separate unit only for your core data service okay yeah uh, yes please anything else hi dear william it's me nicholas here but we will be getting server access to do our programming practices and all right yeah yeah we'll we'll, we'll offer server access uh, for two months uh, as part of this training two months actually more than enough because yeah two months if you really want beyond that maybe you need to pay as per that uh, uh, vendor who is charging but as per this training, we'll provide for two months. Once the actual practical starts from that time, we'll provide the server so that just for you not to waste your validity. Once your actual practical thing started from there, we'll provide the server access. It's for two months. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Pratik, there's no session tomorrow for you people and our, we'll meet on Monday to discuss more about HANA. Maybe one more two, one or two more sessions will be 
uh, more about understanding hana then we'll go with the practical things okay Yes, Santosh, Pratik, and Nicholas. I, I have your mail ID. Pratik, I have your mail ID. Santosh, I think your mail ID is something at discovery.com. I'm not sure whether it's valid or not. Sherlyn, I have your contact. Shiva, I have your contact. And Santosh, I don't have your contact. Maybe if you're really interested, please uh, reach me uh, either through WhatsApp or my mail ID. However, it is. If you wanted interested, okay. Okay, then thank you. The same link, even for Monday, also. The same link you can join at the same time. Thank you, Adi Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, right. Bye bye. Bye.